on the issue of uh, missing body parts theory I think investigations are still going on and the post-mortem uh, processes and reports are being prepared and I think I am advised by the experts that we should not preempt uh, the investigations. Uh, it's a theory, as I said the other time, it's a theory we're investigating. The reports that uh, came from the MOOC are still being uh, finalized and I don't want to preempt uh, the, the matter beyond there. On the question of um, change of tactics, the answer is yes. Every time, every week, every other so often, we are looking for better ways of quickening the search and rescue. So we have we've made some improvements which will be implemented this week. And as I've said, even the air, air support or the use of aircraft has not been ruled out. And uh, you'll see some action perhaps towards the end of the week on that front, among other tactics that we don't want again to say publicly, because the criminals also watch television. They also listen to radio. So if, they, if we tell them what we want to do, they might take uh, cover in case they are criminals hold up there. But we believe they are criminals still in this forest. With regard to how many more grapes, as I have said, this is a very vast property. We are moving methodically. Uh, and that even the process of identification of graves is ongoing, but we, we have work to do. The, the damage is, is quite significant. Um, at the moment, uh, we have 20 mass graves that are being opened, and uh, we suspect the graves could be having uh, several victims. But again, once more, we just want the public to know that the process is far from over and we want to do it so carefully that we don't leave any of our people in this forest alive or dead. The last one was, uh, what did you say, my sister? The DNA. DNA. Yeah, that process is ongoing. I don't have the latest figure, but that process is ongoing. I think it was 88 by yesterday, 88 or thereabout, but I can confirm for for the maybe uh, what you can do RC yes. when you do the briefing today you can answer that question uh, because I don't have the latest figure but when I checked the last time it was 88 and that process is ongoing tracing of missing persons reuniting families the Red Cross and other groups are really supporting us in that the county government of Kilifi continues to provide us with the very very critical amenities and we thank the county government of Kilifi and the local leaders here and the community at large. Um, we have reviewed by way of decision that from today the daily briefing will be done at 5 p.m. sharp. I know you have challenges with press time but we also have challenges because we do it earlier then something else happens between three and four or thereabout and then you start having the stories like we we were hearing last week there's a discrepancy i mean why would the government hide one body you announce 109 then you hide one how does it help you isn't it if you announce 109 unless you are telling the world there is nobody who is dead then you can it makes sense but if you are saying we have lost 109 kenyans why, why would it matter to hide one body? So to avoid those kind of things, the briefings will be done promptly at 17.00 hours, 5 p.m. daily. And by that time, the activity of that day will have closed in terms of exhumations. Of course, we can't close the search and rescue. You can't say it's 5 o'clock, we can't rescue. We rescue throughout. But exhumations, by the time the regional commissioner comes here to give the update at 5 p.m., we will have closed the activity and there will be no uh, discrepancies. Now, Takia Kilalaheri, you guys are good people. Asante sana. Thank you very much.
last week, the National Assembly Security Committee to access the grave area. Why? Because the National Security Security Committee is a committee of parliament of Kenya. It's not a political institution. It's an institution that represents parliament. And in fact, the members of the National Assembly Security Committee that came here were members from both the government side and members of the political opposition. So an institution like that, which does oversight, will be given guided access. We'll have access to talk to even to our officers here, because again, we have nothing to hide. That should be a clear message that the business we have here is not the business that some of the players want to think we are doing. The situation is bad enough. And I don't think there's anything more painful than what has happened. The accountability process, as I have said, has commenced. It has begun. We started by asking all our colleagues who were in this county and the police stations and police divisions around this area, first and foremost, before we even do anything, to go to other stations and allow new, new team, a new team, so that we don't, when the investigations start and they, as they progress, we don't have anybody perhaps who may think, oh, maybe I should have done this, I didn't do it, and therefore try to interfere with investigations. But I said that is not enough. The accountability will still come through a legal process, because again, we don't want a public lynching of public officials. In that regard, last week, President William Bruto appointed two institutions to help us with the accountability journey. The first is a commission of inquiry under the Commissions of Inquiries Act Cap 102 of the Laws of Kenya, which inquiry is supposed to look at, um, at uh, what happened at Shakahola. And it will help in framing the legal issues the legal issues, what happened, and number two, what lapses may have caused this, including lapses within the security sector. And that's why I'm saying the accountability will not be just for the perpetrators, it will also visit the public officials who either should have done something, they didn't do it, or they did something which enabled Mackenzie and company to cause the country such harm. So again, we, are we, have, we appeal for patience and forbearance. At the same time, President William Ruto last week appointed a task force. Now the purpose of the task force, unlike the Judicial Commission of Inquiry, <coughs> is to look generally at the issue of regulation of religious activities so that we don't have a repeat of what has happened here. That task force has representatives from government, representatives from religious organizations and civil society and many, many actors who are represented there. And we are even willing to expand it a little longer, uh, or rather a little more, to make sure that there is uh, representation of all shades of opinion. So that as a country we can ask ourselves, why, why should we have this kind of religious entities. They prey on people, they cause murder, yet they are using scriptures. Yes, yet they are using religion. So we must sit down and the members of the religious fraternity from all faiths must be part of that discussion. And they, sh sh they should help us, they should help government and tell us how do we regulate religious activities without, first of all, hurting the very sacred rights in the Constitution to freedom of worship, but at the same time without exposing the public to manipulation by rogue religious people or criminals purporting to be religious people. So we have no 
war with religion. We have no war with the church. We respect the constitution. But anybody who think they can hide behind church or mosque or synagogue or temple to commit crime, their days are numbered. And I say so with so much certainty that any person who thinks going forward they can use the constitution and the right to the freedom of worship and they can use the holy scriptures of any religion to kill the people of Kenya, to torture them, to strangle them, to smother them to death, to starve them to death. In the name of God, those people must look for another country to exercise their so-called right of freedom of worship. And therefore, even beyond the task force, we will not wait for the task force to tell us. We will continue doing what we do, that is enforcing the law, because what has happened has happened. The problem is if something like this happens again. So all those uh, crooks, uh, criminals, charlatans, masqueraders, or whatever purported faith, who are purveyors of crime, your days are numbered, we will get you, we have categorized you with the rest of the dangerous criminals like bandits and terrorists. I want to end there by thanking again every public official present here and those who are not here involved in this exercise. I thank the civil society, non-governmental organizations, human rights groups, the Kenya Red Cross, the media of our country, international media, everybody who has spent time to focus on this tragedy, to tell the world what happened. And I know from your, from your expose, from your own perspectives, we are picking lessons to make sure that we don't have a matter like this on the soil of the Republic of Kenya. Na watakia kila laheri, sisi tunaomba ruhusa, tuache roda hapa na wenzetu wale wengine, tukimbie mahali ingine kwa sababu Kenya yetu hii. Na ye ni kubwa, matatizo ni mengi, lakini kwa majaliwa ya mwenyezi mungu, tuya tutaweza kuthibiti usalama wa nchi yetu, tuwe kama nchi zingine ambazo